Hi, everybody. Hey, Happy if you're just Tuesday, sorry, speaking over each other. Uh, if you're just popping in, smash some likes, say hello, let us know, let us know you're out there. Oh, I almost just choked on my own spit. <clears throat> mm. I'll get, the, I'll get this whole breathing, drinking water game down. Isn't it funny how like I, I'm 40 and you're you know 38? It's like I always laugh when that happens. I'm like, how is it that this body at four decades plus has not figured out how to drink water <laughs> or swallow its own saliva and like by putting it down the wrong pipe? It just doesn't make any sense. And here we are trying to become enlightened. That's right. We can't even figure out how to, to just, swallow our spit properly. Just trying to figure out how to get that spit down. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Uh, so if you're, if you are brand, brand new to the community, so hey, uh, Brenda and Pam, got Scott, Caroline, uh, Alex Morsi, always good to see all of you guys here. And then this, uh, hey, Cece, what's up, what's up? Uh, if you are brand spanking new to the community, well, welcome in, first of all. Um, a few just pieces of, uh, things you should know, uh. My name is Guy Ferdman. Camera fixes itself. There it goes. Oh, oh wow! Look at that. You... <laughs> Enlightenment. Today, today we are flying this thing backwards. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> Enlightenment. That's what it looks like. You just oh. flip yourself upside down. It's a very <laughs> multi-dimensional funny. experience. Hard reset. Um, so yeah, if you're brand new to the community, hey, we're uh, we're the Ferdman brothers, also uh, co-founders of Satori Prime. And hosts here of the Old Souls and Seekers group, as well the as the Old Souls and Seekers podcast. That's a mouthful to say. Um, we just keep adding, like it's like a PhD with like a lot of letters after it that nobody knows what any of it means. But that's that's what keeps happening. We just keep adding new assets to our name. Um, we are uh, about 20 years on our spiritual path um, and coaching for about 15 of those, maybe more. Honestly, like, it's hard to keep track these days. And we're just uh, two guys, honestly, who are deeply committed to our own awakening um, and to the awakening of, of other people. That's not always uh, a linear process. It can be a little bit messy. It's fun sometimes. It's frustrating sometimes. But hopefully, if you are part of this group, then you are somebody like us. You're a, a seeker um, and you feel deeply inside of yourself that you uh, there's room for healing, there's room for transformation, there's room for an enviable amount of wealth that you want to feel authentic connection with yourself and other people. And honestly, you just you you want to learn more about your psychology and more about your system. And how do I regulate myself? How do I get myself into a place of well being, a place of safety? And so if you're coming on these Tuesday lives, that's what all these conversations are about. Honestly, it's always really about the same thing. <laughs> we give it we give it we give it different topic names because we're we're trying to look at different vantage points and, and areas of life that people may struggle in but at the end of the day what we're talking about here is consciousness and awareness and so again if you're brand new to the community welcome and then uh the other thing i would tell you is the the number one resource that you want to take advantage of here when you first get in is the active healing meditation that we provide here as a free resource for you okay even if you are a very practiced 30 40 year meditator We've had many of those that have come through through our wings here, and and this particular style of meditation is usually uh, still very mind expansive for people who've been meditating uh, for a long time, and it's because the nature of what the meditation is used for. Most of us know uh, meditation as a, a form of relaxation or a de-stressor, and those are all really nice byproducts. Uh, very few of us know it as a, a tool for healing, and so if you want to learn uh the beginnings of the fundamentals of the process of how you can use your own awareness and meditation for literally healing and i'm talking about healing yourself 
um, healing relationships, healing uh, stress wounds around financials or just physical w- not not well-being. If you want to learn how to activate this higher consciousness within yourself, it, it's freely available to you. So if you want that, just type meditation or meditate or something like that, meditation in the comment box below. And then uh, we have people here from our team. We have Sarah, we have Corey, we have Jasmine, we have uh, Nikki and Tobias. And these guys are, are people here in the group, but they're also the support team behind the scenes. They're the team that can tell you about the type of programs that we have, what it is that we do here, how we offer it, how it's delivered, and and can have real conversations with you that will coach you through what you're dealing with. Uh, and also give you information to see if there's alignment between what it is that we're doing here and things that you may want to be doing in your life, right? We, we often find that we, we have a wide expanse of people here from people who are just like, what is this consciousness thing? To I've been doing this consciousness thing for 20 years and I feel really stuck or frustrated because I've either plateaued or like this frustration that Elon and I have defined in our own systems is like no matter how much work I do, I'm still dealing with this. And so again, we we have we have experiences here that run the gamut from everything of just how to teach somebody to like take responsibility for their consciousness and how they can use that for manifestation, all the way through like really really profound deep healing work from um, you know things that we've learned in mystery schools and and some of the top teachers uh, in the world that we've been able to integrate into our own lives and into our um, way of life and teachings. Okay, so meditation. If you want that training, uh, our recommendation really is like seven day minimum do it but the truth is you know to form a habit they say it's like 21 to 30 days and it's not about like you having a habit of meditation uh more so than anything it's understanding how to guide your own awareness and consciousness to a place that allows for healing to occur yeah. okay you, you don't have to do it you just have to train yourself and your body to get to a place where it can do it by itself and and truth be told and we'll talk about this a lot today um, it's it's learning how to regulate your own nervous system. Believe it or not, there is an auto, autonomic nervous system, but you can also uh, participate in how it's processing and metabolizing energy. And so we'll talk about that because that lends itself into the, today's conversation, which is what do you do when you feel stuck? You know, what do you do when you're frustrated? We just had a a call with our coaching team here. <clears throat> um, and these are, again, people who like support people inside programs and guide them through these type of, you know, awakening experiences um, as you move through them. And and truth be told is at the end of the day, you know, Elon, I'm sure would agree is like, we're all human. We're all dealing with stuff, even after 20 years of practicing all sorts of different things, like things in my life frustrate me, things in my life overwhelm me, things in my life stress me out. The the real differentiator is what do I do with that when it's here? How do I be with that? And what am I learning from it and how versus what was me? It's just happening. Yeah. And now I'm a you know, chicken with my head cut off, frustrated at myself, frustrated at everybody, you know, potentially destroying relationships or sabotaging things in my life. And so like, we don't have to do those things. There's just like practices we can put in place that when we are feeling under resourced, we can resource ourselves again. And, and I'll say one more thing here and then I'll throw it to, to you, bro, which is like one of the beautiful things about being connected with so many people from all over the world and, 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 and very intimately with our coaching team and clients and stuff like that is that we get to see this incredible phenomena that most people don't, which is that everybody is dealing with the same thing at the same time. Here's what I mean by that is like, whether you know it or not, the, the world is conceived and constructed and created from energy, vibration and frequency. It's just all energy, right? And so there, it's like, it's almost like we, we because of how many people we are communicating with, we get to see how energy hits a population of people and that everybody is literally going through that energetic experience simultaneously and have their frustrations about it or the things that they're you know grappling with and things that they're afraid of or overwhelmed and so they have different variations of the same thing but like the undertone of what's underneath all of that it's like oh my god everybody is going through this simultaneously and there's something really beautiful about that because that means that at the level of the collective we are simultaneously processing experiences, even though to the individual who feels disconnected, it'll feel like I'm the only one dealing with this. I'm all by myself. Yeah. I have to find the answer by myself. I have to do this by myself. I have to process this by myself. And and 
and that's just not the case. And I and I kind of want to get into that, bro, about getting unstuck today, if you don't mind, which is like this this really important piece about support that I hope we get to. Um, so I'll just kind of ping pong it to you right now and uh, let you take it from there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I was actually, as you were thinking, because we, we did just have that conversation with um, with our team as well. And I, I do believe that there's this delusion in personal development, spiritual development, call it what you will, that people strive for. And it's this place where life just hums along, right? Like I'm no longer going to have stress around money. I'm no longer going to have stress around relationships. My health is going to be rocking. Like everyone has this kind of like try over it. They're, they're like when all of this stuff works, when my career is working, when my money is working, when my health is working, when my da, 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 like, that's when I know, well, I will have made it. And look, just take it from me for what it's worth. Having coached someone who's basically been a billionaire, like, still deal with shit, you know, and, and I'm going to share something that it's kind of sad and like, you know, but, but it hit home in the same vein yesterday, like Cristiano Ronaldo. I don't know for those that, that follow football or soccer, as we say here in the uh, States, um, you know, top of the world, right? This guy, like good looking man, awesome wife, like one of the best soccer players in the world, money up the wazoo, like everything, health, et cetera. His, they just, his wife gave birth to twins and unfortunately one of them passed away like a little bit after birth, right? And it's like, I That's sat cool. there and I kind of wept for this man because I'm like, most people would look at this guy's life and say, oh, he has it made, right? Like doing this work doesn't remove you from being human. Life is always going to come at you. Like always. It doesn't matter how much you invest time, energy, money. Like life is going to come at you. I think what sets us apart from 99.9% .9 of humanity is that as life comes at us, we have trained our nervous system and our mind to perceive that which is coming at us very differently than 99.99% .99 of the world. And like, this is what I kind of want to throw back to you guys here who are listening. When do you find that you are making better choices in your life, better choices for yourself, better choices in your business, better choices for your kids, better choices with your husband or wife. Like, when do you find that you are making better choices? Is it when you are stressed, overwhelmed, like everything's coming at you super lightning fast and you're just like sitting there kind of like, what's that game where the, you slice fruit? Like, like you're like a... I know what you're talking about, but I've never played it, so I don't know the name. Yeah, whatever, that famous game. That's the vision I gave tonight. Or, you know, when you're when you're in a peaceful state, when there's just like more peace, when you have more time, it's just like fruit ninja. See, I was close. There it is. Yeah. So, right, like when do you make better choices? When you're fruit ninja person, just like whacking away everything, or when you're in that peaceful aligned place. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist, right? To know when you're going to do that. The second question is, yeah, when I feel centered and grounded. Great. Beautiful. Now, here's my second question. How often do you feel centered and grounded? How often are you in, in energies of peace and acceptance and love? Because if you think about it just as a very simple kind of like A plus B equals C, right? If I was feeling centered and grounded, if I was in a peaceful, accepting place and life came at me, right? Like A plus B equals I'm going to make better decisions. So if that was 
kind of like the A plus B equals C situation, then it would get, I think that it would be very important to work on having more peace and well-being and groundedness and fulfillment. And that's not what most people do in personal development and spiritual development. Have you ever walked to a coach or anyone and said, uh, I'd like to hire you to help me to feel more centered and grounded <laughs> and peaceful, please? If we were smart. <laughs> yeah, if we were, but literally like and, and like, let me let me know in the comment box, like, have you ever thought that that's what you were after? No, never. It was always like. I want to have better relationships or I want to make more money or I want freedom around money or I want a better career or I want to fix my health or I want to fix this broken heart or right. Like never did it cross your mind that what you really want is to feel centered, grounded <laughs> and aligned. I love Dan, Dan Blackman's yeah. answer. Yes, I hired you for that. That's right. Yeah. So, you know, the reason I feel, and I'll just I'll loop this into the stuck thing, like the reason I feel people are stuck is because the old paradigm, and I'm not knocking it, like, trust me, Guy and I have done so much of that work, right? But like the old paradigm of personal development was based on producing a certain result, producing more money, producing better relationships, being more effective at work, whatever it is. And so... If that's your goal, you're going to start to ask very different questions. You're not going to be interested in how do I get more centered? How do I feel more peaceful? Your question is, how do I get more of money? How do I get more of relationship? How do I get more of health, right? And so in that is this thing of like, you will always find ways to empower yourself temporarily to keep moving forward in life. How many of you guys have through books or seminars or videos, there was an area that you felt really, really stuck. And then you, you read this thing or heard this thing and it gave you enough courage or a different perspective to move through something that before seemed impossible to move. Right. And it made you feel really great. Like you were like, wow, I did that thing. And then what happened after? Did the same thing that tripped you up before, maybe about not being worthy, or maybe about feeling alone, or feeling like you disappoint people, or that you're a loser or not good enough, or did that piece always come back? Yeah. yeah. So Brenda is saying absolutely like a Band-Aid. Caroline is saying yes, but it's temporary. Exactly. You guys are like right on there with me. So I'm glad you're picking this up. Like. And then what happens afterwards when the bandaid falls off and the thing comes back, it is so disheartening. Isn't it disheartening to like put in all that work, put in all that effort, think that you've made all this progress, then get hit with the same thing over again. And that's the feeling of stuckness that I want to kind of explore here today, because I'm telling you as someone who has been there, like it took me 15 years to get to a place where I was like, holy shit, I have just been putting on Band-Aid after Band-Aid after Band-Aid. And just because the Band-Aids get bigger and fancier and they're more sticky, so they stand on a little bit longer. And instead of this thing coming back two days later, maybe it came back two months later. And I was like, wow, I did good work. But you know what? When it comes back after two months, it's even fucking worse. And when it comes back after a year, it's even worse. And I don't know how old you are, but it took me till about 35 years old to figure this out. And I figured it out because I was dealing again. This is after like two years, this boomerang thing came back. And after two years, I sat there and I was like, holy shit. This again. And at 35, I said, you know what? If I plan to be 100, let's say, I'm actually planning to be older than that. I, I would, my number for whatever reason is 153. I don't know where that came from, but that's my number. Anyway, I was thinking to myself at the time, if I was going to live to hundred, I was like, am I going to go through 70 more years of this? Like the same thing over and over. 
and it made me nauseous, nauseous to the point that I almost wanted to puke on myself. And that's when I first popped out of this paradigm of more results, faster, this, that, that. And I just, I was done. I said, Hey, I don't want to bandaid this anymore. I want to learn how to heal this. And that's when I got off the hamster wheel of this stuckness that, that we're kind of alluding to. And the invitation today is, you know, if you find yourself in this thing that I am describing, I'm here to tell you as a, you know, product of the AA system, I'm Elon Ferdman and I struggle with the addiction of reliving patterns over and over and over again, right? If that's you, I want to let you know that there's a way off. And it's a lot easier than you think it is. A lot. Like, because the band-aids have to get fancier and fancier, you have made it that the solution must be so much more difficult or elaborate or whatever it might be because the things that you've tried have not worked, right? So the mind is like, well, it's, it can't be that. So it's got to be this other thing. And now you're looking for these impossible things out there and they keep leading you to disappointment. So I just want to offer that if you found your way to Satori Prime and if you found your way to this community, there's a good chance that your soul and your heart already is kind of like nudging you in a certain direction. And I want you to know that if you stick with us, like you can be off this hamster wheel very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I, ironically, you know, what Elon's pointing to is how we, we act in the face of overall stress and anxiety, right? Like the, the actions that we take. And so uh, there we've been led to believe that the the cure or to our predicaments to is to just solve problems eternally right like over and over and over again and, and do stuff and do stuff but just kind of like take a quick no moment here to notice like what is always standing behind a problem that you're fixing is really just your next problem right and so the it, it's interesting because the the action of no action takes a lot of practice because we, we are, we're living in a world that tells you to act quickly, act decisively, figure out what you need to do, figure out who you are, figure out what you're going to do with the rest of your life. And then like instant and immediate feedback on everything, right? Yep. Like even today when we look at like uh, how people are in politics, like we demand an immediate reaction to something instead of being like, you know what, why don't you guys sit with this one for a little while? Exactly. Take a breath, like, people. Take a breath and take your time before you immediately react to the situation at hand. And so we have become reactive instead of responsive. And what Elon is talking to is how do we become more responsive in our life instead of overly reactive? Because when we, when generally when we are reactive, we react from a part that is upset. It doesn't mean that you are upset. And this is a misnomer that we often use in language. We say, I'm upset. And then you create yourself as being as upset and then you react from that upset. But what's really going on, what's really going on is that your awareness and consciousness is merged with a part of you that has a conditioning. Mm. And then you act from that conditioning and that conditioning already has a program that it wants to run. It's like an automatic knee jerk response that you've been doing your whole life. Maybe that's sabotage. Maybe that's disconnecting yourself from other people. Maybe that's disassociation. Maybe that's uh, alcohol or, you know, sex or drugs or TV or whatever it is. We, we all do it. We have different ways to do it. Some are more harsh to our realities than others, of course. Right. But like everybody's basically trying to cope trying to cope and trying to manage with a sea of emotion, which is really just energy in motion, emotion, right? Energy motion in their bodies. And for a lot of us, because we have not learned energy fluidity, we have not learned nervous system resiliency. We get very overwhelmed by our experiences. And when the system has overwhelm inside of it, it's like the energy doesn't know where to go. It actually gets stuck apart a conditioning you know, tries to deal with it in the best way that it can. And then you do your automatic response in the world. And so when you do that, you get what you've always gotten. Like if you've ever been in an argument with somebody 
and you do that thing and you you kind of are like you already know how they're going to respond or how like people are going to respond to you or like the situation's going to respond to you you do it anyway and then if you're really honest there's like this little part that's like hee, 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 hee. i knew they were going to do no. that yeah like i knew that was going to happen and like th- like there's an intelligence to that like we actually want to honor that like your system has a habit so that reality to you is familiar maybe you don't like your reality but it's familiar to your system and it knows how to respond to that version of reality. And so our, our awareness, our conditioning, not our awareness, but our conditioning keeps us in this lane of what is known to us and everything outside of that generally for people creates fear and anxiety and this and that. We were actually doing our coaches training and as we were meditating together, this line came through and the line was, the more I've come to understand and know the more I've realized how little it is that I know, right? Like the, the more I go into my awareness, the more I realize like this feeble nature, yes, our mind is an absolutely incredible machine, but what it's been led to believe that is true, what is actually going on, what is really happening in my reality versus what it is that I'm responding, you know, like a reactive to, like I'd be surprised if I am 0.5% correct about reality. You know, like that would be, that would be very generous. generous. I mean, that I know of, of what is actually going on, but there's something beautiful that happens in the, what Alex uh, <laughs> Mor- Morrissey is saying there, which is like, I don't really know shit. We could call it humility, we, but really it's, it's openness. That's what we're really saying. It's like, hey, I don't know. I'm gonna learn how to sit here. And open is not, by the way, just a mental choice. It's, it's literally an energetic training that you can do with your energetic body and energetic system which is actually go we call it being open system okay and most people don't have an open system they have a very closed defended system and so just kind of sit there for a moment and like think about something that's challenging you right now and and notice your notice not you but notice there's an there's a, a response here of defense you're, you're, you're defending yourself from something that is happening, like a warrior. And that and the defense could also be, by the way, like you going on offense, right? Like def, like offense is just another way to go on defense. So just kind of like see if you can feel that in your system, that like the body is trying to protect the consciousness and whatever programs is running up here is trying to create safety. And it's not doing a great job, by the way, because here you are in that situation of the stuckness over and over again. So like the greatest gift that when we start working with people, we, we say like the greatest gift that you can give yourself is not having the perfect circumstances in your life because Elon and I don't control your circumstances. That is way too big, even for you or for anybody else to handle. There is an intelligence, a consciousness that seems to be here, all pervasive, completely organizing, self-healing, self-organizing. And that's what's going on. We're just kind of going along for the ride. We are learning how do we actually go along for the ride instead of constantly being like, what the fuck is going on over here? I got to swim in the other direction. And so the biggest gift you can give yourself is to create enough resiliency in your system, enough fluidity in your nervous system, right? So like, again, if we talk from a spiritual sense, we're going to say energy and awareness. If we talk from a scientific sense, we're going to say your nervous system, but it's the same thing. It's just two different paradigms pointing at the exact same thing in consciousness and these phenomenon that we watch. And what we know about your nervous system is that it can't metabolize energy until it's at a state of rest. When you're in repose, when you're in silence, when you're meditating and you learn how to go into a higher state of consciousness, your body does this incredible thing that once you realize that it can do that, all you wanna do is just do it more and more, which is that your body is a is built to be a metabolic machine. Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, when you eat food, it metabolizes the food, it turns it into energy. Yes, I think we can hopefully at least agree on that as a society at this point in time. (laughs) We we put food in, stuff comes out, and in the process, we get some energy, ATP, your mitochondria, you know, and you get to go about your day. And it is not the only way that our body gets an energy. For example, if you go out in the sun and you get a healthy dose of sun every single day you tell me that you don't feel more cheery and energized on days where you feel sun in your skin and your body is clearly absorbing vitamin d from that which we call the sun right you feel a lot better that day that's a prime example of another way you get energy other examples you're you're in a conversation with somebody feeling very connected 
there is almost an, ex an ecstatic experience when you feel really connected to someone. You lose track of time. Hours go by. You're just enthralled in deep conversation. You can't believe it. Three, four hours have gone by. You shut down the bar, whatever it might be. Highly energized state. Right, highly energized. So there's different ways that we get energy. Now, in contrast to that, imagine going through a traumatic experience or something negative in your life or some challenge. It's extracting energy from the system, right? You feel down, you feel sluggish, you can't think straight, all that kind of stuff. We want to start paying attention to these little things. And what we want to learn is, so how do we help the body metabolize energy and you can get and and it's really like what we're calling trauma is really just stuck energy in the body it's like stuck in time like something happened to you in your quote-unquote past it got stuck there your system is holding on to it and has been unable to relieve itself of that energy and so that energy is now stuck and now your mind is trying to deal with that looping 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 and it's looping because it's trying to resolve it However, most of us, because of our conditioning, have not been shown how do we put the body into an environment that it stops looping and just starts metabolizing. Yeah. Okay. So it's like you can think of it as energy constipation. That's pretty much the, what we're dealing with right now. Right. And when we need it, we all need a little bit of Pepto-Bismol, basically. <laughs> so, um, so I want to just point to it and then I'll, again, I'll throw it back to Elon. Here's, here's what we teach here, okay? And here's what's different than pretty much anything else that you'll learn. We teach not just a subtle mind awareness, which most people in personal development know that there's a little voice in their head. They know that they are not that little voice. They know they can listen to it. And something magical happens when you begin listening to your little voice inside your head and realize that that's not you. By the way, if you haven't had that realization, it's a good realization to have, and you want to be taken, and if you, you, you are not, either not accustomed to that practice or you don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about, you want to talk to our team about doing our level one work. Okay? Like you are a prime person to go set that foundation. It will change your life. Guaranteed, dramatically change your life, your relationships, your health, your awareness around money. Like there's nowhere that it won't completely rearrange what's going on. Okay? If you are adept at that, the next level is not just subtle mind awareness, it's subtle energy. How do I become aware of the energy flow in my body? Because what we are is energy. And get outside, because what we want to do is we want to unmerge from the conditioning that our mind is, because that's what's driving the ship in the same direction over and over again. Okay. So what ends up happening for most people, even in personal development, is they become very aware of their parts, but they don't know how to unmerge from them. And so it's like an object looking at an object. It's like something looking at itself in the mirror and it can't see what's behind it because of course, every time it moves and you move and look to another direction, it's just moving right along with you. So you don't get another perspective. How we can change that and shift that and start metabolizing this energy is by learning how to go into altered state of consciousness, which means unlocalizing or coming out of the conditioned mind so that you can uh, sit in your seat of awareness, what Michael Singer coined as the seat of awareness in Untethered Soul. And from there, you become the sub subject looking at the object. Okay, And this is what we teach in our work and uh, train on and, and all little practices you can start doing inside of this connection to this awareness that allows for healing to just happen on its own without you having to actually do anything. It's just you just sit in the awareness and it all just kind of happens on its own. Uh, with your perfect timing and your perfect organization for your perfect intelligence and body because everybody is different, okay? And so when we do this, what we can do is we can look back at the body. The body goes into a state of rest, right? Rest, what a nervous system, what science calls a, a rest and digest or a parasympathetic nervous system response. And from there, your body is this intelligent that it will just start repairing itself, okay? Just like the way that your body repairs a cut finger or broken bone or brings um, life into a woman's body when she's pregnant. Like we don't need to actually uh, interfere with this process. Our body actually is trying to metabolize energy all the time as long as it's put into the right environment to do so. Clearly, if a tiger was chasing you and you were running a full tilt, it's not a great time to do trauma healing work. Like you got to fucking run, right? You got to go save your life. But when we are stuck in that state, and that is our interpretation of what's happening in this world, is that 99.99% of the public 
because of news and conditioning and society and religion and you know at it at it at it whatever is going on over there is literally stuck in a response as if a tiger is chasing them all the time they are literally in a fight a flight or a freeze response and from there the body cannot metabolize energy it just can't it's in a stress response it's not the time for it to go into repose and do that and so our work is about training people how to go into that restful response so that the body can do its work okay when that happens your inner experience of yourself reorganizes and reforms to a more neutral state neutrality is where all manifestation comes from and the energy that you carry in your body is emanating in all directions and that which we call reality is an organic hologram that is interpreting that frequency and so the reason most people get super challenged with manifesting the life that they want is that the frequency output is not changing right just like a computer it gets input it gets output input and output we're just the same way we're terminals getting information inside and outside of ourselves whether you know it or not so the information that you're outputting into reality is how people are responding to you is whether money is going to come your way or not is the health of your relationships is the health of your body everything is connected to this energy and so when we are externally focused we can't take advantage of this but when we learn to internally focus and how to work with this natural flow of our body it's like things are just fucking clicking and moving and shifting and like you will start seeing that relationships start shifting not because you've had a conversation that completed everything although that's valuable don't get me wrong uh they will just because the energy has changed so first of all are you guys tracking this just say i in the chat box if you are and second of all if you are and at any level anything that i just said whether it makes sense to you completely or you're just like i don't know what this crazy person is talking about but it sounds really good and maybe your next level of transformation then I, I'm telling you again, you are absolutely a candidate to be doing this work. And you gotta follow your intuition on this. This is not a mental choice. This is an intuitive choice that people make when they're guided towards these kind of teachings. So look, there's no commitment on your part for what I'm gonna tell you to do next. It's just a conversation. And it's not even a conversation that's going to lead to us to you buying anything because we don't let our, our people do that on the first contact with you anyway. But if you want to learn more about this before I hand it over to Elon, you want to learn how to bring this practice into your life. And honestly, it bolts on to anything that you're doing. If you are praying all day, keep praying. If you like mantras, keep mantraing. If you need to journal, keep journaling. If you want to jump like a crazy person with Tony Robbins, keep jumping like a crazy person with Tony Robbins. And we can tell you, you add this sauce into whatever practices you have right now, and you are going to see everything change, including the quality of the practices that you're currently doing. Yeah. It will blow your freaking mind. So if you want to have a conversation with somebody about this, just say contact me in the chat box and then somebody from the team uh, will reach out to you and let you know how you can schedule a call or get information about um, you know, how to actually participate in these levels of trainings and kind of figure out where you land um, depending on um, you know, your level of commitment or anything else that, you know, any questions you might have about what this looks like. So that's the, uh, by the way, just so you guys know, April 30th and May 1st is our next intuitive mind live event. So like now would be a great time to, to, uh, no, Natalie asked, I answered. Um, I want to show you guys something because a lot of the times people think that what we talk about is like science fiction or this like very woo thing guy and I, if this is your first time working with us or, or know us in any way, shape or form, like I think what we do exceptionally well is we look for things that are practical. Like I'm, I'm a results oriented person. Like I, I do love results. And at first it was through the, the mental construct of understanding and reframing and NLP and neuroscience and all that kind of stuff. Like we, we did all of that. Right. So that's the basis of how we, we coached and, learned and trained. And in the last five, six years, we've started to merge what guy was saying this, like this, this new sauce, this new energy stuff. And it made everything else that we were doing infinitely more powerful and quick. 
that world though of energy, frequency, vibration, alignment, things like that, to most people when they hear it, they're like, ah, I don't know, this yogi nonsense, Buddhism crap, whatever, right? And like, you can have that opinion, totally. I, I went into it also. I was like, I don't know. I don't even know what this stuff is, right? But <laughs> Guy and I love to experiment, love to explore, and it felt right and in alignment, and we just followed it. So I want to show you something because there's a lot of cool tracking tools right now out there uh, that allow you to track meditation, that allow you to track heart rate variability. So when we talk about fight, flight, or freeze, like a heart rate variability or your heart rate can tell you a lot about your stress levels in your life, right? If your heart rate variability is very low, that means that your body is not getting nourished. It's not getting recharged. It's not doing any of the healing stuff. And so most people that live up here will tend to have a very, very low heart rate variability. Now, the numbers I'm going to show you here, I want to show you like what happens during a meditative state. So hopefully you guys can see this. Is that somewhat clear? Uh, yeah, just point and tell them which, which is which. Okay. So the top part, this is, this is where I always get heart. This is where I appreciate Vanna White, I guess, a lot more. Um, the top part is my heartbeat. So you can see how uh, the heartbeat was kind of like fluctuating and it dropped to about 52. Okay. The second one is where it gets a little bit more interesting. And this is your heart rate variability. When you're sleeping, okay, when you're in like a restful sleep state, your heart rate variability will go up and down. As it's going up and down, that is the indication of your body actually releasing, healing, doing all of those things. So this was a, call it a 30 minute meditation, okay? You can see that my normal baseline, like this baseline, I mean, like while I sleep, my baseline is kind of around the 31 mark. And it's like a really faint line. I don't know if you can see down here. All of this, like I reached levels of 44, 45, like that in peaks and troughs. Okay. All while sitting in silence and meditating. Now, if you tell me that as that, like when you see something like that, like that physiologically things are not happening in your body while you meditate. I know that sometimes when you meditate, it's like, oh, my mind is really loud or this is that. And you think like, oh, I had shitty meditation. Like I'm not good at meditating or whatever it might be. Right. I can tell you, I don't know for that. That was like two days ago or whatever it was. Like, I can't tell you what I was thinking about, but I can promise you that my mind was spinning. I can promise you that my body was moving. Like I can promise you all of that. And still my body was able to find this rest and digest place whereby we started this conversation, right? Like if that becomes a way that you could get into these places to receive nourishment, to receive well-being, and you drop into those states of peace, the thing with meditation is it's irrelevant what is happening in the meditation. What's relevant is what happens in the 23 and a half hours after that meditation. How do you show up in your work? How do you show up as a parent? How do you show up as a husband or wife? How do you show up to your friends? How do you show up to yourself? How many of you are really, really hard on yourself. And like, be honest. Your talk to yourself is, is downright like mean at times. You're not good enough. You're not fast enough. You're not smart enough. You're not this enough. You're not that enough. Like it's just, and it's this constant berating piece. And here's the weird part, because I, I have it too, like it's, it's way infinitely less today, but in a weird way, this voice, this, this part of me thought that by yelling at me, it was somehow motivating me. And at times, yes, it yep. probably worked. But a lot of the times, especially at night before bed, I wasn't motivated. I just went to bed feeling shitty about myself. How many of you guys can relate to that? Like just this, this constant berating. 
Like there's some way or some person you have to be in order for it to be okay. And how's that been working? Like it's, I can tell you from my experience, it was not. It's really difficult to live and perform when you're under that much pressure. And so doing things like that, and yeah, that was the aura ring and doing things like that and getting data on, oh my God, when I'm actually doing these practices on top of the fact that I could feel great, but like now I have trackable proof and evidence that the work that we do here works scientifically, physiologically works. Like your body is going into a rest and digest state, which if anyone knows, like the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system, like what you want to do is get your body into that state. And we said in the beginning, if you're in those states, are you making better decisions for yourself in your life? Versus the ones that come from fear, lack, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, I will only disappoint people. Like one way or another, every action that you take, there's an energy behind that action. If the energy comes from any of that negative talk, that's why you keep producing the same results. That's why you keep getting to these places of disappointment time and time again, because you figure it out a way to like strategize and manage and get around this thing. And all of a sudden here it is again, because it's like a terrible doctor. You know, you go to a doctor and your back hurts and what do they do? They give you pain meds for your back or they like move something in your back, etc. You know what the really good practitioners do? They get interested in like, why is the back being hurt? And chances are it has nothing to do with your back. Maybe it's your ankle or your knee or your neck or your arm or whatever else. Because there's certain doctors that are just treating the symptom, which is what most people do, even in personal development. Like, it's like, oh, this is wrong with me. Let me go fix this. Versus practitioners who are always looking for the root cause. The holistic approach. Yeah. And until you take the holistic root cause approach for you in your life, you will keep feeling this stuck. And so the question I always ask people is like, how long are you willing to be okay with being stuck? And you, you're the only person that can answer that for yourself. How long are you okay with just having this? And not to be the bearer of bad news, but like you've been doing it, I, my, my guess is not for the last month, but this has been going on for quite some time. And if you're still dealing with the same things that you were a year ago, chances are the methods and tools that you're currently using are just not sufficient anymore. And I do believe, I will say this, this has never really come out of my mouth yet, but like, I really do believe that there's an energetic shift for all of humanity. Like, like we're just kind of going through some massive, massive transformation right now. And the tools that helped us shift before aren't quite as effective as they used to be. How many of you guys have that experience where it's like, I used to use these things, they worked really well. Now they don't kind of work the same way. New tools for new jobs. Mm -hmm. That's honestly what's on offer. It's not that you've done anything wrong. It's, in fact, the fact that you're here to have this conversation and be open to this conversation and be honest with yourself that, you know what? I do feel stuck. And yes, I have done this work. And this Band-Aid thing is just, it's just not working for me. Do you know that you would have had to have done all of that work to have all of those experiences, to be able to see the limitations of that? When someone's just starting out and it's like, they're still in that honeymoon phase. Like, oh my God, this is so exciting. Yes, this works, this works, right? Because in the beginning it kind of does. And then it stops. Meaning like you've done all that work to get to here. Yeah. And if you want to break through that, again, the invitation is like, go plug yourself into this community. Stop trying to do this work on your own, people. <laughs> it, it, 
I just keep using this thing. Like guy says, if you want to, if you want to go somewhere fast, go by yourself. If you want to go somewhere far, go with others. So my guess is that you've been coming at this on your own and you've gone fast. And now when you want to go deep and you want the true healing, you can't do it anymore. Not on your own. You don't have to either. It just makes it so much more enjoyable to be in a community with others who are doing this work. Yeah. Nor have we really seen that work for people. No. I've never, I've really never seen anybody like there, you know, again, what Elon's not mentioning is that there's different layers of, of trauma that humans are dealing with. Right. So like we're, we're relational beings. It's just de facto. It's biological. You can't help it. Like we need connection, whether you know it or not, like humans desire deeply at their essence to be connected to other people and, and authentically. So like some of us have like, we have connections with people, but there's not a lot of value in there. It's like our, you know, friends you party with, but you don't really like deeply know them. Like, it's just, there's a quality to, to this that it gets hard to put into words, but when you have it, you know it, you know, like meeting the one and having somebody really see you for the first time. Like why, why is it that meeting the one and having someone really see you can have such a profoundly positive impact on two people? Because you finally have somebody who just sees you and is presencing you without trying to change you all the time. Right. In a relationship where everyone's trying to change everybody all the time, there's not really authentic connection. It's just two people acting from their conditioning, thinking like you you're you're making my parts feel unsafe. So I need you to be a different way, which is honestly the whole of how most of the world is operating. We're stuck in this loop of people need to think like me, act like me and feel like me so that I can feel safe. It's not going to happen. You are you are <laughs> fighting an endless battle. And it's OK if you're fighting that battle, because so many people are. You're not going to get there. No one's going to think like you. No one's going to act like you. No one's going to feel like you. No matter how many religions they join that are the same or how many constructions of governments or democracies we create, that's the nature of humanity is to perceive things in different ways. And there's value in that because then more of reality is revealed to all of us through the different ways that people see the world. Elon Musk does not see the world like a lot of people. He's also changing the world in a way that many of us did not expect. Right. Like what if we just try to make Elon Musk be like every other schmuck on the street? Like he wouldn't do any of those things. Right. It's his unique perspective that, that gives him that ability. And so your unique perspective is, is a is a wonderful gift. And, you know, Lacey, let me see if I can find what she wrote here. You know, Lacey is stuck in this situation with situation in quotes here with her boyfriend. Right. And there's like trauma there and, you know, whatever it might be. And she said, like, you can't bring a horse to water. And that's often the way that that we think that's the way we used to think, too. It's like, oh, they got to do this work, too. If they don't do this work, like, how are we going to be around? How are we going to connect with each other? And maybe at some level of reality, there's some truth to that. And there's some truth to everything everybody says at some level of reality. Right. But here's the what we have found doing this work is like that relationship, whether it's with this person or somebody else, most likely is going to go the same inside of your experience. Why? Because you're emanating a certain energy. The other person has to respond to that energy. So you, it's like our energy like puts people into a corner that they have to respond in the way that our energy system likes to be responded to. In a more mechanical way, this is how I used to represent it before I understood energy. As I used to say, when you meet somebody, say hi, they say hi, you exchange pleasantries, and then you tell you begin to tell each other stories about your life. It's how we share information, right? Like two computers sharing information. Now, it's not just a story. What's subtly in all these stories is what you like, what you don't like, what you care for, what you don't care for, what annoys you, what doesn't annoy you. And this is how you teach people about yourself. So you're out there training your community how to teach you. And then humans do this really funny thing. We train everybody around us exactly how we want to be treated. And then when they start treating us this way, we tell them to go fuck themselves. <laughs> We're like, like, don't treat me that way. But you, without knowing it, are responsible for training them to be that way with you. And guess what? It keeps your story in play. It keeps your version of reality in play. It keeps you knowing how to respond to people who respond to you that way. And it keeps you in this war that you've generated within yourself and outside of yourself with the people in your life and the way that you view reality. And so what we find now with the energy work is again, like when, instead of being externally focused, you turn inward, you find your awareness, you learn how to sit in the seat of awareness, you learn how to relax and calm the body down to metabolize energy. And awareness has this beautiful quality where it, it is naturally liberating and reorganizing all the time. 
You don't have to do it. It just does it on its own. And so as your energy changes and your system literally reconfigures itself to a more neutral state, you will then find that the people in your life and the relationships you're connected with become more neutral. Who would have thought? <laughs> right? When we sit at polarities, then we get the forces of energy that polarities give, just like, you know, a copper top battery with a zinc on the bottom. The energy is moving between the two, and that's what's creating energy. But if we should, you know, but if you neutralize it, then the, the, the reaction stops. So you can either be the battery taking one side or the other where there's constant reactivity in your life, or you can learn how to come to the neutral state and then act from here. And you will find that what happens in your life, those things flourish much more easily because the resistance that's created by having a stand on something or being attached to something so deeply, not just consciously, but energetically in your system literally does not allow for those things to flow into your life. It can't, it can't, it cannot. Reality has to be reactive to your energy. That is the nature of it. So the only way off the hamster wheel is to become more neutral. Yeah. It's to learn how to use action to be not an action at all, but just let action unfold naturally through your own intelligence. So I want to remind you, there is only one awareness. I don't know why that's always very moving when you the recognition. There's only one awareness. You can connect to it at will once you learn how to do it. And then you will find all the lessons that start coming as you connect to that awareness and all its abilities and powers that it has that actually work through this system called Guy or Elon or Brenda or Corey or, you know, Jacqueline or anybody else who's on here. Like there's nobody who doesn't have this gift. But the gift comes when you connect to this awareness where we begin coming and it will become self-apparent because awareness teaches itself. So when you connect to awareness, it just teaches. It's just what it does. So I think we'll begin closing it out here today, guys. But again, if this is interesting to you, you know, at the most basic level, I would say, and you're like, yeah, I want to do this kind of work, then come to our two-day event. You can explore that if you want, or, you know, you connect with our team, you might find out that you're like, shit, this is exactly what I've been looking for. And we can talk to you about like more longer term practices and what that looks like. But again, there's no no commitment on your part for having a conversation. It's just a conversation. See what feels good to you. Ask all the questions that you want. Find out from people who are directly experiencing this work. What are they saying? And then we can't prove it to you. Prove it to yourself. Prove to yourself that connecting to this changes the quality of a person's life. We can guarantee you that it does which is why if you do any of our programs and you don't absolutely love the experience that you've had, that's why we give you a, a refund on it. Like we don't, we don't, we don't need anybody's money who's not getting value from doing this work. And we can tell you our refund rates are extraordinarily low because I make, I make fun of this, but you know, you get those, that little language on the bottom of the page. It says these results are not typical. So that people like offset their liability, but I'm telling you right now, these results are typical. Because this, this is it's it's typical because it's innate. Everybody has these qualities. What nobody has shown them is pointed at those qualities for people to recognize it within themselves. Because how could anybody point at it that hasn't recognized it within themselves? You have to see this this part of reality to be like, did you notice that? Did you notice that when you were doing that experience that that's what's going on? And the person's like, actually, I did. And and that's how you form a map of this awareness in your own mind. It's got to be pointed at by people who've already done it. We're very fortunate to have had the resources and time and, and the desire over a 20 year period to work with incredible teachers who time and time again are like pointing, 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 pointing until you're finally like, whoa, holy shit. Like that's what's actually going on. So much bigger than you ever imagined. So much crazier and magical and multidimensional than most of you ever fucking imagined that life could possibly be. And, and we are literally at the starting blocks of a new consciousness here. So, you know, if you want to participate, it's a very, very, very exciting time here. It's a very exciting time in, in human history um, and our human evolution. And, you know, our, our hope and prayers for you is that you 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 say yes, you follow your intuition. Um, and if it's guiding you here into this type of work, then you are up for some really, really extraordinary stuff in your life right now. Two quick reminders. One, uh, prices for the live event will actually go up 
um, th- on April 23rd. So you have about three and a half days to basically still get in at the, uh, the lower price point. So get your seats now. Um, and then the other thing is when you book a call with our team, uh, there's an opportunity for you to actually get a $500 uh, credit to use. So just, you know, make sure that that's kind of in your back pocket. If you do decide that you want to move forward with our Awareness Effect Academy programs, that that's available to you as well. And they can discuss that with you as well. So like I saw a bunch of you guys comment here. If you want to reach out to our team, just say, hey, someone please contact me. Uh, And for those, I saw Andrea was so beautifully raised her hand to share any of her experiences. If you ever want to talk to anyone who's done any of our work, like, feel free to message them. I mean, like, I haven't met a single person that's in this group that's gone through our work that would uh, not give you their full and honest feedback. And you can hear from them rather than from us. So with that, we'll wrap up today. Uh, We hope to see you guys soon. And uh, if for now, all it is that you want to come keep joining us at these Tuesday calls, feel free to do that. And when you're ready to dive in and actually uh, dive deeper into this work, then you can contact our team and figure out how to do that. Okay. All right. Have an amazing rest of your week, guys. Thank you for listening. Love you very much. All the best to you. Bye, everybody.